the CEO and founder of the Shoe Surgeon brand, is here. Um, this is an iconic brand. Uh, this guy is considered a, a innovator, a vanguard mm -hmm. when it comes to designing sneakers. A lot of what he's done, the blueprint that he laid down, Heather B, had been bitten, rewritten, almost sound like copied, a run amok, but they ain't down like right. this guy right <laughs> here. I made a verse out of that. You saw what I did Bars. right there. So he's the first. He's one of the first. He'll tell you who inspired him. Um, but when we talk about these M and M J fours that I, I'm sitting on, that are worth what twenty plus K, you know, when you talk about some of these sneakers that get into, you know, money you would pay for a car or a house, um, these guys right here at the forefront of that movement. And so I want to welcome Dominic here for the, the the actual founder of the shoe First surgeon time brand. Serious too, First swear. time in serious too. First time in serious XM. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Urban necessities. Woo! Come on, man. Urban necessities, from what I found out after doing my research, because so many people kept coming back, saying, even when we brought it up on the show, we start getting callers right. who mm -hmm. had right, been right. to the store. Right. Yeah, yeah, Sway, I got a tattoo at Urban Net Necessity. <laughs> you got a tattoo? It's a sneaker store. Crazy. When would you get the tattoo after I got the haircut? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> right? Really? What 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 are you listening to? That new Kendrick? Where'd you hear it? At Urban Necessities? <coughs> Damn. For real? Well, where you get this gear from? The same place, Sway. Yep. It's crazy. It's <laughs> an experience. Two J Kicks is here, ladies and gentlemen. Big round of applause. Two J. Appreciate y'all having me. Dominic, let me start with you. Where did it start for you? I mean, I've always, at a, at a young age, I was very creative in building stuff, but it really started when my cousin let me borrow her 1985 Jordan 1's freshman year of high school. Wore those to school, everyone looked at me and just flipped, and I was able to speak without talking. And uh, after that, I was just tired of getting the shoes that my friends had. Because once you wear that shoe once, that's it. You can't you wear can't, it like, again, you right? can't You can't go back to school the next day and wear it again. So I would get Jordans early, and then after my friends all having the same shoes, I airbrushed a pair of shoes, yeah, Air Force uh, Air Force One all-white mid, and airbrushed it with the camouflage print. And went to school that day, and it was the same thing. They were like, where'd you get those? And it just clicked. I made them. So... And then the pe so the people start coming to you from that moment to get shoes made or I mean I was doing it for myself I just wanted to have something unique that created a voice for myself and then of course everyone wanted stuff like friends like oh make them for you know do them for me and I never charged people back then because I wasn't excited I wasn't fully uh, loving how my work came came out uh -huh. it wasn't perfected yet which I've since learned it's never perfect it's never perfect when did the value become appointed to the sneakers the specially made sneakers about what year did you start seeing an increase in value when did people really start just pay like paying yeah like when it, it was thousands it, of it, yeah well it was me letting go of of understanding what how to how to exchange money for the energy i put into the sneakers and i think the first sneaker uh, the first Stinker I sold was like three hundred bucks, and then, you know, now I'm selling them for two hundred fifty thousand. <laughs> I'm quitting. I'm quitting. This is my last day here. I'm about to go design some sneakers. Yeah, you know what's wild is yeah. he's actually here too. He has a, a a surgeon academy in Brooklyn that's going down today with the NFL. So in Seaport, in Seaport. What's yeah. a surgeon academy? What is so, that? So so. Uh, teach you how to be him. About six, seven years <laughs> ago, I started uh, a school, a workshop where people can learn how to take shoes apart and rebuild them. And it's um, it's just something that is a major focus in, in, in what we do because I want to give the creativity back to anyone that wants to learn it. Two hundred a quarter of a million dollars. First of all, round of applause for sharing, because a lot of times yes. people have these gifts they don't want to share. Thank you. You know, and you're open enough and confident enough, secure enough in what you do to want to share. A quarter of a million dollars. For I'm, wor I'm, I'm working on a two million dollar shoe. What? What brand can you say? It's the Air Mags. Two million. Custom, f completely custom. Wow. Who would pay two million for a pair of shoes? Shh, that's happened. 
DB, why you raise your hand? You got two million? <laughs> no, you said who would pay. I don't oh, have oh, two oh, million. Oh, okay. <laughs> the Air Mags, like I told, I told them in the lobby, the Air Mags are my dream shoe. And so if I had two million dollars to get a custom Air Mag from the surgeon, fuck yeah. Mm. Is it a gamble though? How do you know that the two million is going to sustain its worth? Or does it not matter? It's art at this point. So the the way the yeah. way with with my shoes, I, I mean, some people keep them, put them on a, you know, put them put them up. But there's a lot of people that wear them because I I make my shoes for people to wear, and I see it as art. Yes, there's going to be collectors that just want to collect it and mm -hmm. and hold on to it, and then there's going to be the ones that can wear it, wear that art into the you know. That's you can the wear beauty of sneakers too, is that there's no right or wrong way to do it. Right. And, and there's so many different level of collectors, right? But like like he mentioned, some want to wear it and have that feeling of, you ain't got these, and some guys just want to, or you know, ladies want to just tuck them and put them on a mantle and stare at them, collecting dots till they fall apart, mm. and then you give them back to him, and then he re, you know, he refurbishes you know, them, put, put, and then you got another ten, fifteen years in them. Damn! All right, we got Cedric on the <laughs> line, um, from Minneapolis. Cedric, go ahead. Hey, Ceddy. How are you doing? How are you guys doing this morning? Good morning. Good morning. So it's funny. My son kept saying, Dad, we got to go to 2 J store in Vegas. 2 J store in Vegas. I'm like, all right, we'll go out there. I kept calling my man 2 Jack because I didn't know who he was, right? <laughs> 2 Jack. You can call me God, whatever you want, man, especially if y'all are paying attention <laughs> to what I'm doing. I, I really don't – that that don't bother me none. I'm just humbled that you felt motivated to call in and, and speak on it, bro. Lord. Uh, we, met, we met you at your store in Vegas, and you're the nicest person I ever mm -hmm. met. He gave us T-shirts. He took pictures with us, and to the point where he inspired my son to start his own store. And my son, I script that I ain't tell this guy to call. Did you, did you have him call, bro? No, nah, that's just, okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I'm dead serious. I'm an old man. I, I knew nothing about it, but I swear, my son and he inspired my son. And like I said, I met him at his store in Vegas, and I met him a couple times at the sneaker event, the sneaker cons. The nicest guy. Then I did my job. Meet. We're aiming to do a broadcast December 16th from Urban Necessities. Yep. So, Cedric, I'll put that out on the air. So prepare for that, okay? And bring your son if that goes down, okay? Yes, I, sir. I appreciate you guys. You, you're a citizen, Sway man. Sway in the morning. Um, I want to know, where did you start? Did you start in the sneaker business? Nah, I mean, mm. I grew up in Jersey, right? What? Yeah. I'm from oh. Perth, Amber. I went to school Why Madison. are you looking at <laughs> Hey, Sway, you can't I'm from Cali. Listen, I'm from Cali. Bro. Yeah. So, man. <laughs> I've always had an appreciation for, for our culture, right? And I didn't really know how to articulate or express my love and passion for, for this culture. And so, you know, I was a knucklehead growing up. I did a lot of stuff, probably not the most ideal way. And my journey led me to Vegas, was homeless for a bit, not because I had habits, just because I didn't want to pick up the phone and ask anybody to mm -hmm. get me out that situation I put mm. myself in. And then I job hopped, and I've always been in retail, and I've always been good at what I've done, but I struggled with direction and being told how to do stuff. And so I'm looking at rap, I'm looking at you know our like our neighborhoods and the way that everybody's styling and fashion, and just like I want to do that, I want to live that, but I can't. How do I how do I involve myself and not look like a tryhard? So I figured trying to sell sneakers till I found another job. And I, I put in over 100 apps over the time where I was trying to, um, you know, find a, a job. Mm -hmm. And the sneakers just didn't let me. Sneakers never let me go back. They you called know? you. And so the 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 hood dream has always been like, yo, when I make it, I'm going to have a barbershop that sells sneakers and this and that. And when I was a kid, I used to jump on the train from Jersey and walk from MSG all the way to Queensbridge and back and just find like barber shops and just like get caught up in all the stores out here and and like I think I'm one of the first that forecasted these stores these type of stores need to be in malls with high foot traffic these type of stores need to cater to all walks of life and I need to clean it up than just being that like mom and pop yeah right and so you know from I I say it all the time from average Joe to fat Joe they come to the shop and it's just been real cool to see what they mm -hmm. gravitate to, what they're buying, what what it means to them, how it's inspired others. And we've created a lot of content kind of like Dom to kind of show others how to do it. Because like it ain't about the I don't I don't have fear of giving somebody the playbook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because you're not going to run the plays the same way as me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's not what I was put here to do. You know, for me, my intention was to fix a lot of the flaws 
and to take a lot of the risks that a lot of people wouldn't be willing to do. And I had nothing but time, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. here we are. How many years, years later? Nine years later? I'm going. Yeah, I, uh, I just we just celebrated our eight year anniversary in September. Oof. But 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 uh. Wow! Congrats! That's thank huge. You. This this started with one shoe at forty bucks. At forty bucks, and now you're selling shoes for two million. Well, he <laughs> let, let's 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 let's, let's, let's yeah. he's doing that. Okay. I, I sell sh shoes reasonably priced from under $100 <laughs> uh -huh. all the way to $300,000. But, mm. you know, we're catering all walks of when life. When you sell a pair of shoes for 100000 or more, do you feel like you got over? Not. Did I get over? Not got over. That's the wrong not, connotation. You know, it's just like, uh, look. But kind of. Your pocket. <laughs> but here's here's Facts. here's why the, the average consumer struggles with the thought process of somebody paying a higher dollar amount. You're you're basing that that spend based off of what you got in your pocket, yeah. not understanding the body of work of that person that could justify that expense. And not everything is for everyone. So like, uh, you got to remove emotion from like from that. And I I know that that that's gonna go over some people's head, but it's to me it's ill that somebody could get to that point and say, yeah, I could justify that expense. Forget if I'm the guy that sold it or not. Like I, mean, I could justify that expense, and I could have that, and I could wear it into the ground or put it on the wall. Like that's it's like it's Ill. like becoming a rapper. A lot of the rappers' first shoe is the Air Mag, right? Yeah. Because that was the shoe that they wanted to get. When what is it now? Thirty thousand. Yeah, I mean it depends on which one. You go to the auto lace and joints; those are six figures. You know, like it's like a painting. Or it's like, like a painting. Yeah. It's just different. Or a watch. you can wear it because yeah. it does. It won't just last forever. That's the th difference. Okay, guys, I, this was an improv conversation. Yeah. So, but I appreciate you coming in. We got um, we got a, our next guest, Pinky Cole from Slutty Vegan, about to come up. But Urban Necessities, if you're in Vegas, make sure you check them out. H hit up Two J's, Two Jacks, Two J Kicks, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to call, call them. It, but we in Vegas and in Caesar's Palace, and in December December eighth, we're opening a store in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. So, yeah. I told you, Slay is different. It's different, and, and, and we coming from Miami, like. February, March. Yep. If they want to reach you, how can they reach you? Uh, Instagram, 2J's Kicks, T-W-O, J-S Kicks. Nice. J-S Kicks, 2-T-W-O, J-S Kicks. Don, what about you? Yo, check out uh, at The Surgeon on Instagram or at SRGN Academy. That's where we're teaching our classes and uh, giving out the knowledge. I love it, man. I'm glad we all met. Thanks See y'all in December. Don, we're gonna die. My birthday's coming up in July. Size 11. Yeah, size 11. In July. My in July. birthday coming up. All right, we got uh, <laughs> we got Pinky Cole from Slutty Vegan here. All my vegans, where you at? All my vegans, hey. call up 888-742-3345.